Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I uh, I ruined Ethan Van Skyver's evening yesterday. He was having a live stream. He was going to talk about I don't know, pies and mummies, Crybor, Gray Fisher, and I wanted to talk about this shit. <laughs> and it was a pretty good live stream until my phone overheated, um, and uh, I basically just bummed him the hell out uh, because uh, it's looking like. Community is just another word for extortion. Now, extortion is not a word that I like using. It's very harsh. It's very definitive. It's very damning. If there is a better way to describe this situation, a better word, a better phrase, please let me know and I will gladly use it. So let's, let's tell a tale. Let's go back to September of <laughs> September of uh, this year, September 1st, uh, I believe, they launched Berserker, and it was uh, fantastically, fantastically successful. Although it's a little unclear because it looks like you can do late backers. Uh, it says 1.4, but then <laughs> Ethan was saying he saw some other page that said it's up to 1.7. So Keanu had an idea. You know, basically coming up with another franchise for him. And then Matt Kent and Ron Garney and Boom Comics, they all got together and they said, great, people are going to love this. We're going to put it out in comic book stores, but we're also going to do it on crowdfunding. We think that would be fantastic. And uh, it was all good. <laughs> Everything was fine. I mean, people loved it. Its first day was massive. It looked to be like a huge success that no one... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh God, no. SJWs are not going to let success happen without either trying to tear it down or take their cut. So within days, basically the next day, uh, a whole host of uh, a who's who of who's cares uh, was uh, bemoaning that uh, Boom, the studio that had brought um, Berserker, uh, first to crowdfunding and later to comic book stores, had uh, not paid them very well. In fact, some of these morons had worked for $20 a page for sometimes as long as four years. And that was Boom's fault and not their own. Uh, it's kind of been a funny little thing. Um, you know, uh, everyone gets a different page rate. And, you know, it, you never want to say it first. What do you pay? <laughs> nice try. No, what is your page rate? So people will quote me their last page rate. And uh, for these indies, in fact, some of these indies that you've heard of that are, you know, in the top, you know, five or so, their page rates are like, I would want to punch myself in the face if I paid someone that little. So I remember one uh, guy, he came from, it wasn't from Boom, but it was kind of on that level of Boom. And I go, yeah, we need to double that. Um, I, I have this thing about when you give me your quote, as long as I don't gasp, uh, it's fine. I'll usually, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, sometimes I gasp because it's too high. Uh, sometimes I gasp because it's too low. It's just shockingly low. But the deal is like, the economy has been good for several years. You don't have to work in comics. If somebody offers you $20 a page, yeah, maybe you take it for your first one or two issues. But after three or so, you start saying like, hey, okay, so you know, you, we understood why I took the 20 and why you offered it. But if you want me to continue to work, you need to pay me something that I can actually afford to live in a domicile and eat food that I didn't steal off of a, like an apple cart in a market. Like you have to pay people something that's actual pay and not just like throwing coins at a homeless person. Um so a whole bunch of, you know, effectively nobodies came out. Oh, how come uh, Keanu Reeves gets a million dollars, but I got $20 a page? Well, because everyone loves Keanu and nobody's heard of you. And Keanu has been a proven success story for 30 years. He's worth what you pay him. And people are coming to this Kickstarter and buying it because they love Keanu. The story's fine. It's basically Wolverine meets Captain America meets Keanu Reeves. Uh, the art's good. I like Ron Garney. Um, uh, Matt Kent is fine, but all these like sad sacks. It's like, I worked for four years for $20 a page. Or was it four years for $20? That's on you. So, uh, 
They weathered that storm. You know, a bunch of nobodies complaining. Eh, whatever. And then along came a spider. <laughs> and, uh, oh, things got really, really, really interesting. So Camilla Zong, again, please don't contact any of these people. Former comics outreach lead. Most likely future publishing outreach lead uh, at Kickstarter. Uh, months after being let go, not actively working in the industry, uh, was quoted quite heavily in a hit piece on Newsarama from September 22nd, about a week before, uh, before the main campaign was to end. Should major publishers and creators be crowdfunding comics alongside independent and DIY creators? Yes, okay, so, yeah, so. So, uh, Camilla got quoted uh, constantly throughout this uh, article. And the word that uh, was continually associated with Camilla was the word community. Uh, as I've said, it's looking like, I never liked that word community. There's nothing specifically wrong with it. But I just noticed that every time it's used, within a couple sentences or sometimes the next sentence, you're being threatened or pressured or blackmailed or whatever. Like whenever you hear the word community, like something bad is about to happen. And now it's looking like community is just another word for extortion. Um, so I, d I did a whole video on this before, but um, uh, former Kickstarter comic book <coughs> outreach lead Camilla Zong believes there's a space for big companies to join Kickstarter while still respecting the homegrown community. One way is to shout out other Kickstarter campaigns that they really like or want to support, Zhang tells Newsarama, and I think that imbuing your own campaign with a kind of fan engagement element is also another way to just really try to connect with your community. Some campaigns do this better than others, I will say. Zhang says that Boom's current Kickstarter campaign for Berserker is, quote, ruffling feathers, unquote, among the crowdfunding space due to its treatment of the community. So I, I have a question. It, what is the community? Is the community th the customers for, because you talked about fan engagement and connecting with your community. That sounds like a community that's like healthy. You got someone who sells stuff. You got a bunch of people who want to buy that stuff. Okay. I would just call them backers or customers. You want to call them community. But then the next paragraph, community becomes other people who have Kickstarters, government name competitors. I know there's a lot of, and it talks about Archie. But another thing is that if you read their campaign page, they're talking about Berserkers, it really doesn't have the community in mind. There's no sense of gratitude or humility in that campaign, which is fine. If that's the route they want to go, that's the route they can go. That's their choice. But they don't seem particularly concerned with ruffling feathers because they're doing very well. Yeah, it's called capitalism. What, why, why do they care? Why do they care? That, oh, okay, because you're going to cause problems. Um, and here's where it gets uh, so much worse. Um, is that, uh, so this is September 22nd. And I... I I didn't remember exactly when it happened. I couldn't find it. But at one point, Ross Ritchie basically said, hey, great idea. I totally support the community. And Boom has backed five, you know, five. Uh... Now, you, you can't really see it um, uh, like you can on Indiegogo. You can actually see what people backed. But apparently, whew, some broke communists did not like that answer. So, weirdly enough, two weeks after the campaign ends, Boom Studios pledges $100 to first-time comics Kickstarter campaigns, A through G. Then another page of H through Z. And this is being referred to as the uh, New Publisher Initiative Supports Kickstarter Community. And then at the bottom, it's called some other really sketchy word that sounds compelled by threat. Kickstarter Support Initiative continued here. So this is all of the... Uh, so they had to they had to prove their work. Not only were they pressured uh, into supporting their competitors for no reason at all. Now you want to talk about this community. Now, if all of these people had helped promote Berserker, 
Yeah, it would be kind of, you know, pretty cool. It's kind of like, remember Follow Back? Remember Back? Hey, I'll follow you on Twitter if you follow me back, you know? And especially, that used to be the the way back in Kickstarter. You're like, hey, I followed you. Hey, I've got one. Would you follow me? Or would you back me? Okay, fine. But these people, as far as we know, not only did not help at all, but their community actively tried to hurt Berserker over and over and over again. So there was a little confusion about what exactly they did. So I went back to, you know, the primary source. So this was uh, about two weeks ago. Boom Studio shared today that it has backed nearly 100 comic book and graphic novel campaigns on Kickstarter from creators running their first campaign on the platform as part of its support for the Kickstarter comics community. Why, besides social blackmail, put against your company by multiple people, but primarily Camilla Zong, why did you back competitors? These people haven't helped you at all. In fact, they've hurt you. So I will posit something, and it's just a theory, that they saw themselves being threatened and attacked. They saw someone leading a group and connected to the company that they were using, Kickstarter, the platform. And without it being directly said, the law is very kind of, you know, uh, direct. You literally have to go into the Italian restaurant and say, this is a nice place, shame if something would happen to it, while other restaurants in the neighborhood have burned down. This is not the classic direct extortion. I will call this something like uh, social blackmail, uh, community extortion, or maybe just aggressive persuasion. Um, but the idea was put out there. You're going to keep being attacked until you start coughing up money to this community that's never done anything but threaten you. And if you give them money, the threats will stop. Now it's how and why and where and the further mechanisms in it that, like I said, ruined... Uh, Ethan's evening. So they want to give back to the community that's done nothing but hurt them. The community being uh, a broke communist at Kickstarter, formerly at Kickstarter, and nobody's, you know, who had stupidly worked for four years for $20 a page who are just salty. And random nobody Kickstarter campaigns that nobody cared about, that's the community that they have to, uh, that they have to appease. The company has pledged without a reward, $100 to each of these currently active qualifying campaigns in the comic books and graphic novels categories, an industry first move to support the Kickstarter creative community, which will be further supported by additional publicity and social media promotion. So as a tax, as an unofficial non-governmental tax, based on their success, they must now help their competitors and uh, just people who just, again, I, I, I spoke to Ethan. I said, why not just hand 100 homeless people $100? Why not hand 100 of the people that stupidly work for $20 a page for four years for Boom, why not give them $100 each? Or why doesn't Kickstarter do it if they just care so gosh darn much? Because what it's looking like, what, what was put against Boom was something called a revolutionary tax. I called it a woke tax and somebody steered me towards this. Revolutionary tax is a major form of funding for violent non-state actors such as guerrilla and terrorist organizations. Now, this is symbolic. I'm not accusing anyone of being a violent non-state actor or terrorist or guerrilla. But as I read on further, it will sound very, very similar to the unofficial non-governmental woke tax that is being put against Boom. Those outside the organization may consider it to be a euphemism for protection money. Proponents of such groups maintain, however, that there is no difference between the revolutionary taxes extorted by given groups and corporate taxes raised by government. So basically, two different groups who have two different ways of threatening you and harming you if you don't comply will put taxes against you, official and non-official. Revolutionary taxes are typically extorted from businesses, and they are, and they also quote 
play a secondary role as one other means of intimidating the target population. By which, and this is simply a theory of mine, I could be wrong. The word is put out unofficially that if you want to run a crowdfunding without being harassed, it must be a Kickstarter. Further, even if you run a Kickstarter, you can still be harassed, to which you should either hire someone who recently worked at Kickstarter and still knows people there, or you must pay this revolutionary tax, this woke tax, to your competitors for no reason except for the threats and the harm and the attacks to cease. Again, if you give money to the peers of the people attacking you, the attacks will cease, and they have, quite quickly, I might add. Uh, so the Irish Provisional IRA and Corsican FLNC have extorted revolutionary taxes as well as the following organizations. So I thought this was a very uh, interesting concept, the idea of the revolutionary tax. So let's look at who they gave to. Um, we are, uh, uh, okay, I read this one yesterday. So yeah, so it went very quickly from starting something that everyone liked to ne'er-do-wells and broke communists causing problems to uh, multiple hit pieces to suddenly out of nowhere giving $100 to 100 strangers and competitors for no reason except for to get attacks from their peers to cease from the peers of these people being benefited. So you look at this and it's shit, essentially. It's pathetic looking Kickstarters that even with the extra hundred are not even close to being funded or got funded at ridiculously low levels where people are essentially working for free. This is barely enough to pay for printing uh, and shipping. It probably isn't enough. Again, many of these fall so incredibly far short, it's nothing but they're not even going to actually get it. Now, here's where it's worse. So, I don't know how it works with the further, you know, purchases, the late backers, but Kickstarter takes its cut. It's about 10% overall. So, that'd be $150,000. But some of it goes to the payment processor. I think that's like 3%. So, about 7% goes to, uh, goes to uh, you know, Kickstarter, which isn't bad. Let's do some math here. Let's just call it 1.5. One, oh boy, I'm already screwing up. 1.5 million times point, now this is just going to Kickstarter, not counting the payment processor. So they got 100,000. So they're happy, but not that happy. I mean, the other people are walking away with a million while they're only getting a hundred thousand. That'll only pay for, you know, one union agitator on the payroll and probably not even everything. So now there's a way for them to get more money. Not a lot, but if you can start doing this to everyone, if you can do this to the, you know, Scott Snyders and other people are going to make, you know, a couple hundred thousand, it can start adding up. And that is, it's not just this 105,000. You have to go through another round. So now, let's go ahead and clear that out. A hundred campaigns are going to get a hundred dollars as, uh, you know, as a... Uh, a revolutionary tax, a woke tax, as a way to make the attacks cease. So then uh, Kickstarter gets to take another 7% off of that. Now it's not much, it's another $700, but if they start having, let's say fellow travelers, allies, co-conspirators, uh, people on the right side of history, to pressure future Kickstarters, you can get that, you know, extra little percentage. You can actually take your fee and then take your fee again. Now, will they able to get Scott Snyder to donate to 50 or 25? Who knows? But the 
they've done a dry run of it and it's worked and nobody stood up to them. And the amount of 100 is completely arbitrary. Why not 200 or 500? Or why not just raise the percentage? Why not have, you know, you know, right now they basically have a flat tax, you know, it's 7% no matter what you make. Why not say above 200,000, you have to give 10% to Kickstarter and 5% to charity. And that's what these are. But it's a charity that Kickstarter gets a kick, essentially something that resembles a kickback. Um, and this is based on nothing but someone who produced something that people like being threatened and realizing that if they give extra money, amazingly, the attacks will stop. Uh, so uh, I find this quite shocking. I would love to be proven wrong. I mean, please, by all means, prove me wrong. But I don't see it any other way. People who had nothing to do with the success, who actively tried to harm this project from the beginning, eventually terrified the people so much that they ended up supporting 100 crap Kickstarters that nobody gives a damn about. I mean, look at this shit. It's awful. This one hasn't even hit 10%. Some of these have actually ended and failed, funding unsuccessful. These, I mean, these are just awful. Awful. This is just charity. I mean, if you care so much, if you're such bleeding hearts, just just say, hey, if you make above 500000 you have to go hand uh, 100 homeless people $100 each. Why not? And if you do so, the attacks will cease. Um, so we got this one. And, and again, this is fairly involved. This isn't just like listing them. And again, it's, it's nobody's business that they gave to. Uh, but they have to actually prove it. They have to prove they paid this revolutionary tax, this woke tax, or the attacks will resume. So this is fear. This is more than bending the knee. This is just, just getting down you know, on the ground and just kissing their feet. Just please, please. How many do we have to buy? How many abs? And here's where it gets so much more insulting. It's $100 simply as a donation, as processed through Kickstarter where they take their cut. Why not buy the books? You're, you're literally saying, these are shit books. I don't even want the damn books. You're like, oh, well, more goes to the person. Well, is this a charity? Is Kickstarter just a charity where you go with your pathet pathetic, unsellable crap and you just hope that somebody will guilt some successful company Selling something that people actually want. Okay, why did Liana Kangas get a hundred dollars? Brian Stelfreeze, he's not some kid, he's in his fifties. So Brian Stelfreeze got a hundred dollars, but not they didn't get the book. They're like, look, we don't want these crap books. We're just doing this because we're scared, you know? Um, I would be extremely insulted if people were just like, hey, uh, yeah, so um, we don't want the book. Yeah, we really did. Could you not send the book? Because we don't want this shit. Are you kidding me? Um, so, yeah. So that's my thesis. Again, it's just theoretical. It's a belief. I've tried to share things that I believe make it more believable. I would love to have a to have uh, be proven completely wrong. I would love to... Oh, you know what? You're just mistaken. It's, you know, it's so funny that you would say that. But it's not funny. It's not fun. Um, SJWs, after breaking everything, have found a new way to hurt and scare people and take money they have no right to simply because they can get their peers to put out the little, the little signal, hey, boom paid their tax and don't attack him. Hey, Scott Snyder paid his tax. Don't attack him. And I find it very curious that we're seeing one person uh, attached to uh, both of these endeavors. Uh, I find that uh, very troubling, the idea that people who actively try to harm someone then get to decide how that person distributes their money. Uh, I don't think that's going to benefit anyone but bro communists who like uh, terrifying others. So anyway, uh, please again, please don't contact anyone mentioned in this for any reason. Uh, and uh, tell me what you think. I'm very interested in being proven wrong. I'm very interested in talking to people and hearing their side of the story. Hell, I could be 100% wrong. 
And then I just apologize and retract it and do a video about how I'm such an idiot. I'm 100% wrong. But I don't think I am. I don't think I am. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the Patreon and the Indiegogo. If you're finding original content and an original lawsuit, links are in the description. And I will have new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks. Bye.